good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Kaushik Basu. Um, I'm the president of HDCA. Uh, let me just begin by saying that I feel uh, quite overwhelmed to be presiding over an occasion that brings together two names that are my favorites in the profession, uh, Amartya Sen and Tony Atkinson. Uh, it has been a long journey uh, to today. As president of HDCA, I, of course, did play a role in this, uh, but uh, in the conception of this lecture series, I had no role because that had occurred before I took on, and uh, I'm just absolutely delighted that Muzaffar Kizilbash, uh, who is here, he's the person who actually uh, first brought up the idea of this lecture series, and then last year in Jordan, which Muzaffar could not attend, we sort of finally stitched up, and um, today we are here um, for this occasion. Thank you. Um, there are lots of people to thank, but we don't have time for that. Let me just uh, mention that the event is being uh, sponsored by UNDP. I'm extremely grateful uh, for that, and I'm just uh, delighted that Khalik Malid is here as head of HDR uh, UNDP, and he will also say a few words uh, to you very soon. Uh, this is the event uh, today is being um, organized by 3TU Center for Ethics and Technology and the Hague Institute for Global Justice. Thank you very much. Don't want to name names, but I have to do that a little bit. I just wanted to say that um, um, I know lots of people who are involved in the organization, uh, local people, but for me, uh, Ilsa Usterlaken. I've had a lot of interaction with her in recent times and just extremely grateful for the um, wonderful management and handling of everything. And I should simply just also thank the two vice presidents of HDCA, the outgoing and the incoming, Enrica and Sabina. Thank you very much uh, for uh, everything that you've done and for also making this occasion possible. I should thank the organizers also for this gorgeous setting. I mean, I'm, I'm sensitive to the aesthetic appeal of the place where you have an event like this, and really this is just marvelous. Hague is known as the city of peace and justice, and it is correct that this is where we should start our first Amartya Sen lecture. I was also told by the organizers to inform you that the lecture will be filmed. I don't quite know why I was told to tell you that, excepting maybe for you to be at your best behavior because you'll be filmed. <laughs> HDCA is a very unusual um, institution. It has two walks on two legs. Research and dissemination of knowledge is extremely important to HDCA. But it's also a bit of a do-gooder organization. And I have to say, my instincts are such that I like it. And now I myself am in the world of policy. And for me, wearing these two hats of uh, research on the one hand and action on the other is uh, just extremely important. Uh, many years ago, uh, in fact, in the early 1990s, I used to um, do field work in a very, very poor part of India, in Jharkhand in eastern India. Um, collected copious notes over there, uh, and my idea was to write a classic anthropological book uh, like uh, the very famous one out of India, maybe the most famous by Srinivas, called The Remembered Village. I wanted to produce that. Srinivas's book uh, was very unusually written. He collected all his field notes and went to Stanford University, and there was a fire, and all his notes were lost. When he climbed out of the depression, he decided he's going to write from memory. And shorn of the heavy-duty academic footnotes and data, the book is just lyrically beautiful and became a classic for that reason. Uh, when I used to do this fieldwork, that was my target. I would someday produce a book like that. Um, but that never happened. I, I even tried to hold my notes in front of open flames, but uh, <laughs> the technique did not work. So, but the fieldwork actually did teach me something very important and something a bit relevant to today's uh, gathering. And two particular lessons I want to uh, mention, which goes very well with HDCA and HDCA's ambitions. One is for people who live in abject poverty to try to reach these people through the market mechanism is very often hopeless. They are, in some ways, they are beyond the reach of the market. And, um, 
On this, I remember a very, very beautiful paper by Tony Atkinson, today's speaker. In the first fresh script on Amartya Sen, the person uh, after whom the lecture series has been named, on how the market left to itself very often leaves out large chunks of the population, just doesn't reach them. So if you try to, through the market, get to the most impoverished and marginalized people in society, you will never get to them because the market, it, they are not even included in the market. And for this, you need some form of direct action. And this brings up the question of a moral precept that you need a little bit of a radical moral precept that, look, you have to intervene, intervene in the market to reach out to these people. And some of these interventions could be fairly radical interventions. And for that, you don't have to only think of radical authors. Uh, you can go back hundreds of years. Thomas Aquinas, devout Catholic, writing about the importance of property rights, that that should have special sanctity, goes on to point out that, however, if there are people who are deprived, people who are totally marginalized, then the property of the well-off become common property. And he has this beautiful remark where he says that if needs drive these people to take away the property of the better off, then that is not a sin anymore because by virtue of their need, their need, the right becomes the property of these people becomes common property. These are very radical words from 13th century uh, uh, writing. In fact, he was castigated, though he himself was a devout Catholic, he was castigated by the church for using the logic of Aristotle, as was pointed out. He, was, he would later be canonized. The moral precept is extremely important, but there is a second lesson which came out from my field work and a lot of passionate work that would was going on through activists on the ground. That passion and commitment in itself is not really good enough. To get the best out of um, your intentions, you also need research and thinking and learning. You need a lot of professional input in, uh, into this, and there is no getting away from that. John Stuart Mill, talking about the market mechanism, pointing out that, yes, we may not like the some of the consequences of the market mechanism, but we must not make the mistake of pretending as if the markets don't exist. And in a lecture he gave to St. Andrews University in 1867, John Stuart Mill pointed out that it's like a sailor going out into the sea. If the sailor pretends as if the waves and the winds don't exist because the sailor does not like it, he will come to grief. The right thing to do is to recognize whether you like it or not and use the winds and the waves. And likewise with the market mechanism. It's a very powerful mechanism. You can't pretend it does not exist. You have to make use of this. And that is what brings the two objectives of the HDCA together. The radical objective, the action on the ground, but also professional input, the need, because otherwise a lot of well-meaning action from the great leap forward in 1959, Mao Zedong's, to a lot you can think of which in the end backfire because you don't think through it adequately about the reality through which you have to steer your ambitions. And I like to believe one of the reasons I feel greatly honored to be president of HDCA is that this is one of those rare organizations that tries to marry both these uh, interests. And I should say also about today's speaker, uh, Tony Atkinson and also Amartya Sen, after whom this lecture series is named, they represent actually both these. The moral, I, I like the analytical part of their work. To me, that is very important, the beauty the, uh, of the deductive work. But also, I share their moral concerns. And that is very much in keeping with HDCA's concerns. To very briefly introduce the speaker, the speaker, Sir, Sir Tony Atkinson, really needs no introduction. He's held every important post, received a whole lot of important honors, Centennial Professor, LSE, TOSIC Visiting Professor, Harvard, Fellow of Nuffield College. He was knighted in the year 2000. But more important than that to me as an economist is his very, very deep work on inequality, on welfare economics, public economics across the breadth of it, a work which is at one level extremely refined intellectually and also brings the most important concerns to the table. 
This is not really an occasion to introduce uh, the person after whom this is named, and Amartya Sen is sufficiently well known that really I, I don't want to go into at all uh, telling you about him, but just to mention something on a, a somewhat personal note, I, I did my PhD with him. I had actually gone to London to study law, and I was very lucky I did not. But to that luck, he contributed because it was during his lectures that I decided that I'm not going to become a lawyer. And I thank my stars that I made that uh, turnaround and became an academic and in economics with a broader interest, I like to believe. Since this is named after him, I should just end by telling you this beautiful story about his name, which I heard from a Canadian professor years ago when Amartya was not a well-known person. This Canadian was in Amartya's office in Canada and Amartya Sen was trying to explain his name to a telephone operator in Canada who just could not follow. He kept saying Sen, Sen. Finally, a bit exasperated, he said S for somebody, E for everybody, N for nobody. <laughs> so today we will have the first Somebody, Everybody, Nobody lecture by Sir Tony Atkinson. Tony, before I call you, Khalid, will you come up and give a few words to this audience?